Hello and welcome to the show. Now, when it comes to dream cars, I am not one of those people that likes to, well, chop and change their mind with every passing week or depending on what cars have come out in the latest DLC pack for their preferred game. No, while there are plenty of cars out there that I like very much, my ultimate dream car, well, I've had three. Currently, and I suspect it probably won't change anytime soon, is the Shelby Daytona. This is a truly incredible classic race car. Many factors uh, go together to kind of make it my, my ultimate dream car. You know, first of all, the rarity. There are six. Six of these vehicles in existence. There are far fewer of these than Ferrari 250 GTOs, for example. It looks fantastic. It sounds fantastic. Uh, the history of the car, you know, it was built to try and beat the Ferraris. While it could never quite beat them at Le Mans, it did win its Sebring, Daytona, Nürburgring, and so on. It is a truly incredible classic racing vehicle. Previous to the Daytona, before I ever really knew about the existence of the Daytona, my dream car was the Dodge Viper. Now, growing up in England, you hear much about Ferrari, Aston Martin, Lamborghini and Porsche, and so you see plenty of their cars around. But American vehicles, not quite so much. The likes of Corvettes and Vipers, and certainly the likes of classic muscle cars, you just don't see them very often here in England. And... Yeah, I will always remember the very first time that I saw a Dodge Viper, incredibly similar to this one that is on the screen now. I don't think it was an ACR version, but uh, it's just so different. It was so different to anything else that I had really seen about in England, and it was the Viper that got me interested in American cars in the first place. So, yes, this had a uh, very worthy role as a dream car. Previous to the Viper, though, was the Porsche 911. For kind of as long as I could remember back, the uh, the 911 was was up there as my dream car. Admittedly, it would have been as an older version, and this was kind of the, the oldest 911 I had to play around with on a Forza game that I could record easily. So, yeah, it would have been a little bit of an older version than uh, than this one. But I remember having a, a poster, a giant uh, poster up on my bedroom wall as a kid. It was a it was a grey 911. I think it was a Carrera 4S, if I've remembered my names correctly. I don't know if I even still have a poster somewhere. But uh, yeah, for as long as I could remember. The, the 911 was up there. It was a little bit different to the the likes of the Ferraris and, and Lamborghinis of the time. It's a little bit more of a, well, it's more of a sports car than a, than a full-blown supercar, but I like the look of the 911. And while, yes, not much has changed over the years, yeah, Aston Martins haven't necessarily changed a huge amount in terms of styling. Uh, so, yeah, I, I have always had a soft spot for the, uh, the Porsches. And, well, with them now here in Horizon 3, it makes sense to go and have a go with the latest. This, the GT3 RS, has a uh, pretty mighty wing to be getting on with. It is also very, uh, very purple. This is not me choosing a random colour from the uh, the game. This is actually a manufacturer colour option that Horizon 3 gives you. And well, if the game gives me an option to have the car in bright purple, I am going to have the car in bright purple. Now it suddenly immediately uh, looks. It is noticeably a 911, admittedly a little bit more aggressive with its uh, various aero parts and so on. When it comes to statistics, uh, not the most impressive in many ways. With the current, you know, crazy power wars that are going on, the Porsche has just 493 horsepower, has about 340 torque as well for 210,000 credits. That's actually not a huge amount. It's exactly the same, in fact, as the previous generation GT3 RS. The thing is, though, this car is not all about the power. It's not necessarily about the acceleration or the top speed. It will get to just about over 200 miles an hour. But what this car is is all about, what this car excels at, is the cornering. Now, admittedly, a lot of the roads around Horizon 3 is actually very difficult to make the most of the Porsche. And it is a little bit weird. Even in these wet conditions, this car is incredibly easy to drive stupidly fast down these roads. You see, Horizon 3 roads are designed to uh, deal with, you know, 250 mile an hour hypercars. You're supposed to be able to push some of the very, very fast vehicles. And what that means you get is these relatively easy, long sweeping roads. Admittedly, this one here was a little bit more of a twisty road that, uh, that I went and found, but most of the time they are, yeah, very, very quick roads. And this car has got so much grip. 
that it really is easy to drive the car down and there's just not a huge amount of challenge here even when it is raining it's when you put the car on a track when you give it a, a mixture of different corners to have to worry about that is where the Porsche really really excels now I expected this car to be pretty damn good what I didn't expect it to be was quite quite this good it is astronomically fast through these corners. I don't think I have seen a car on rails this much since the Gran Turismo AI. That is how good it will go through corners. It is glued to the ground. There, there is no other, other way of putting it. It does not want to misbehave whatsoever through any of these corners. The back end will stay firmly unchecked unless you are being an absolutely giant tit. It is going to stay on the road. It's, yeah, there is just a huge, huge amount of grip. And when you do overstep that mark, like a little bit around that uh, that corner there, it's so easy. It is so effortlessly easy to bring this car back under control. I honestly think that my kitten could probably drive this car quite fast around a track. <laughs> this is just, you can put the car exactly where you want it at all times. The brakes are phenomenal. We're going for 160 miles an hour here down towards uh, sort of 70 for the hair. But yeah, a little bit of a banked hair, but you can kind of throw the car in. But you can brake absurdly late in the Porsche. It is perhaps one of the best driving track cars. You know, things like the BAC Mono, things like some of the area of atoms and, and so on, can at times be a little bit twitchy, can at times be uh, a little bit uh, unforgiving around a track. Even this, when you're pushing it really very hard around the final corner. We're on the dirt and still the car is behaving itself. That's, yeah, that is some serious, seriously impressive levels of performance from the Porsche. There is seemingly never-ending amounts of grip. You'll be going into a corner, your brain will be shouting at you that you cannot possibly be going that fast, and then the car can probably go 10 miles an hour faster than that as well. It takes time to adjust to this car simply because it is that quick. The thing is, it does have some competition. And it does come from Dodge, the ACR Viper. You see, this is considerably cheaper than the Porsche. In fact, 80,000 credits less. It is quite difficult to get uh, more performance for less money than this ACR Viper. The two examples I can think of, the Ultima um, and probably the V8 Atom. But uh, yeah, this is a hell, a hell of a car. And... It is also more powerful by almost 150 horsepower. There's 650 horsepower in the ACR Viper. There is also almost 200 more torque in this for, yeah, a lot less, a lot less money. And this is some serious competition for the Porsche. In terms of Horizon 3's PI system, it reckons the Porsche is slightly faster. It has it just two PI points higher than the Dodge. So naturally... I was going to have to uh, to try and see which car would be quicker. Now, in a straight line, the Porsche will do more speed. The Viper is limited to just about 100, 173 Horizon Reckon. I think real life is about 180 miles an hour because the Viper has horrendously high amounts of downforce. That also means high amounts of drag. Yeah, the Porsche would eventually go quicker than the Viper in a straight line. They're both fairly similar in terms of acceleration, 0 to 60, a bit over three seconds. They'll be doing 100 in around seven. It's all gonna be about though, who can get through these corners the fastest. Now, trying to pick a track for this was a little bit difficult in that, as I said earlier, Horizon 3 likes having long flowing circuits where you don't really have to worry about tight technical sections. This is kind of the best compromise that I could have. I wanted to have, you know, some fast corners for cars like these to deal with, but also some bigger braking zones, some tighter turns, and maybe even some medium speed turns as well for, uh, for good measure. It was, yeah, kind of a little bit of a compromise. It's a great track though, and especially in a car as good as this, at 140 miles an hour you turn in to that first corner, 
it, the first few times, it, it takes a, a couple of laps to uh, to build up some courage. Each car got six laps of practice, and then I had six laps to set a lap time. So this was after the, the initial practice phase. It took me probably the first four or five laps to build up the courage to turn into that first quarter at 140 miles an hour. The Porsche can do it. The, the Porsche's got more than enough grip to get away with it, but just trying to program your brain to accept that the 911 has got that level of grip is, yeah, quite difficult. I was amazed how well it got away. There are a couple of times around there where you know, I got a little bit out of position, you just put a wheel on the dirt and so on. I was amazed how well there, for example, it's 140 miles an hour. You do that with some other cars and you're having a really, really big accident, but you can get away with just little things in the Porsche that uh, you might not with a lot of other high performance cars. I did actually manage to push it a tiny bit too hard and actually got a little bit sideways on, uh, on that one. Can be done, but is exceptionally difficult. You see, the thing is, as much as I have been praising the GT3 for its incredible handling, the ACR Viper has been pretty much the car I've used to compare everything to in terms of grip. It is my ultimate in terms of a driving machine. It handles exactly how I want a car to. The Porsche gets damn close. The Porsche is perhaps the closest I've ever come to a vehicle that drives as well as the ACR, but it is only a closest. The Viper is still the vehicle to beat it. It is it's just all about the grip in this car. There is so much grip. You can really, again, with both of the vehicles, you can really throw these cars into the corners, but the Viper will carry that little bit more speed. The Porsche will outdrag it. As I said, you know, the Porsche will be a little bit faster, and I know that's a weird thing to say, considering the power differences and so on. The Porsche will be going perhaps a tiny bit faster up towards this first quarter, but the Viper can carry more speed on the way through. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal car, even at these lower speed corners where that huge amount of downforce is far less effective. The Viper can still, you know, can still get on the power out the other side. It, yeah, the, the ACR is a, a truly incredible car. They always have been from the older, the older ACR Viper was a fantastic car to drive, and this new one is just even, even faster. Uh, yeah, as I said, Porsche, mighty, mighty close, and far closer than perhaps I would have uh, ever expected it to be. But the ACR is uh, perhaps still king of the ludicrous track cars, and in terms of lap speed, it shows. It is a 42.1 from the Dodge, while the Porsche a 42.7. That is only six tenths of a second difference. Yes, okay, it's admittedly a relatively short lap, but uh, for the Porsche to have got that close and for me to have another car to uh, kind of compare handling to is a real testament to just, yeah, just how good that uh, the GT3 is and how very, it, it, it's brilliantly purple. I, I, <laughs> just the more I see pictures of the purple car, I, I, I like, I like the colour. However, while in terms of lap speed, yeah, this is probably the ultimate 911 that there is at the moment. I think there is very few, very few cars full stop, in fact, that will go around a track quicker than this one. There is a little bit of an issue. While I would also have the Viper over the GT3 RS, this isn't even the 911 that I would particularly have, because the one that I would want is the GT2. Now... I'm kind of a little bit saddened in some ways that uh, this is the car that comes with the RWB body kit, the wide body kit on it, and most people are only going to care about it because, well, they can put a wide body kit on it. And it seems like a little bit of a shame to ruin such a brilliant looking car for, I, I think, a body kit that makes it look considerably worse. This, to me, is the best looking of the 911s ever made. There is a brilliant combination of, you know, it's still distinctively a Porsche, but it's just that little bit aggressive, that little bit crazy. It's got a stupidly large uh, rear tail fin. I don't know that there's a better way of putting that. Uh, it looks, yeah, it looks absolutely fantastic from standard. I wouldn't, apart from perhaps the wheels, I'm not sure I'm a huge lover of the wheels, but I really wouldn't want to change a thing on this car in terms of looks. In terms of driving, it isn't as grippy as the GT3, that much is for sure. In fact, it isn't that much less powerful, about 420, 430 horsepower in this one. actually got more torque than the GT3, and it is also uh, about 300 pounds lighter. But it simply doesn't have the downforce, it doesn't have the grip. 
of the GT3. Well, that does mean, though, that this can often be, uh, certainly on general roads, this can be a little bit more entertaining to drive. It is a car that you very much have to be awake to uh, to drive. The rear end, it kind of handles it in an interesting way, in a different way, perhaps, to a lot of a lot of other cars that I've driven, because the rear end will step out, but it'll step out very, very slowly on you. It kind of all happens in a little bit in slow motion with the rear end, just ever so slightly letting go when you're cornering it hard. And if you're not quite prepared for it, you could have a really big accident. So, yeah, as I said, it's one of those cars that you've really got to, to pay attention when you're driving quickly. But you get a great sense of reward when you do get corners right in this thing. And it can still be, you know, it still is a very, very quick car. I did uh, briefly go and uh, take it around the same circuit that I lapped the GT3 and the Viper. This was some nine seconds a lap slower than the 51s, uh, which is not too bad considering it is lacking so much in terms of, uh, of downforce, etc. You can see it can get a little scary in this car but uh, yeah can combine the looks and the noise and, and the excitement of driving this to me i would still take the gt2 uh, as, as good as the gt3 rs is this is still my my ultimate 911 that though is going to be it from me thank you very much for watching and until next time uh, goodbye